Let me tell you something. When you want to know someone, you don't just read some book or something and you can't recognize the person. You sit with him, then you realize what type of a person he is. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ali ibn Abi Talib says, Man ra'ahu badihatan haabahu, wa man khalatahu ma'rifatan ahabbahu. A whosoever would see him suddenly would be scared of him, would hold him in awe. But when he would sit with him, he would find him a very nice person, very cheerful person, and he would start to like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the way of recognizing a person. So if you want to look what type of person he is, you look at those who, you, who sat with him, sat around him, who knew him well, and who have written regarding him. You look at the work of Shaykh Abdul Fattah Abu Ghudda, rahmatullahi alayhi. You look at the work of Shaykh Muhammad Saeed Ramadan al Buti, he's still alive. He lives in Syria. You look at their works, who directly sat with Albani, who spoke to him, and who noticed uh, the road he was going on. And they tried to correct him, but he refused to budge and he refused to listen. And in, 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 instead of listening, he attacked Shaykh Abdul Fattah Abu Ghudda in many rasail. And uh, Shaykh Abdul Fattah had, was so fed up with him that he had to write a risala. He didn't want to write that. There were some questions addressed to Shaykh Abdul Fattah and he gave an answer to that. And the student requested that Shaykh, you should publish this. And he published it. Iftira'at wa abatil is the name of that risal. Shaykh Abdul Fattah mentions in there that Nasiruddin Albani, he made this habit of saying with regards, of, you know, doing a muhakama upon the ahadith of Sahihain. Being a judge and judiciary over the ahadith of Sahihain. Whenever he would write a hadith, quote, and then he would say, <coughs> Rawahu al-Bukhari wa huwa sahihun. Rawahu Muslim wa huwa sahihun. Rawahu Abu Dawood wa huwa sahihun. Rawahu al-Nasai wa huwa sahihun. So Shaykh Abdul Fattah mentioned to him, you know, this way of yours is wrong. This means, you are saying that Bukhari narrated this hadith and it's a sahih. That, that's not right. You should say that this hadith, Hada hadithun sahihun, rawahu al-Bukhari. This hadith is sahih, Imam Bukhari has narrated this. This was the attitude of our aslaf. You go in the whole 1400 years, you will see all the writers, muhaddisin, they will say this, that Hada hadithun sahihun, rawahu al-Bukhari. When you start changing the words, it means that you are creating some doubt in people's minds. That in Bukhari, there are sahih hadiths, but there are also ghair sahih, non-sahih hadiths. And Bukhari's, sahih hadith, Bukhari's hadith will only be sahih when you say it's sahih. If you say, if you don't say it's sahih, then it won't be sahih. And this was his, his attitude. He started off with Ibn Majah, Tirmidhi, Nasai, and he wrote books. And he said, Sahih al-Tirmidhi, Zaif al-Tirmidhi. Sahih ibn Majah, Zaif ibn Majah. Now over the whole Islamic history, you will see that Ibn Majah is one book. And all the ahadiths are in there. Tirmidhi is one book. All ahadiths are in there. If there was some comment on there, then Muhaddisin Shurrah would write the comment in the footnotes that this is a comment with regards to this hadith. But this man came and he, he, he produced and he published two separate volumes. Zaif al-Tirmizi, Sahih al-Tirmizi. You go to a bookshop, you will see both. Uh, 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 of course, definitely, you're going to leave Zaif al-Tirmizi aside. You're only going to take that Sahih al-Tirmizi. Sahih Imam Tirmizi has narrated 2,200 hadith in his book. And from there, maybe he has classed a couple of hundred as Sahih. So you will be rejecting the other thousand or one and a half thousand hadith. You will be only taking these hadith which Albani says are Sahih. And you will be rejecting the other hadith. Now, this attitude is wrong. And it amounts to inkare hadith. Because you are doing inkar of those ahadiths which you are neglecting. Which you are saying not right, not correct. Inkar means refusing, refusing to accept. There were many groups of people who used to reject ahadiths. Who, who, who would not believe in the hujjiyat of ahadiths. They would say that hadith is not an argument. Hadith was written many years back. So we don't need to take ahadiths. We only look at Quran. They, they are, that firqa is called munkirin hadith. Parvezis who used to do inkar of hadith, who would not look at hadith, only look at Quran. So this is also, in another word, inkar of hadith. Uh, uh, he initiated this path. He went on this path, he did this with Ibn Majah, with Tirmidhi, with Abu Dawood. And with regards to Muslim and Bukhari, he said that in Muslim there are 53 zaif ahadith. And he goes on there. Shaykh Muhammad Saeed Mamdouh comes, and he writes a book, Tambiwul Muslim, Ila Ta'addil Albani Ala Sahih Muslim. That I want to warn the Muslim with regards to the zulm of Albani upon Sahih Muslim. 
And he goes in that and he scrutinizes every hadith one by one. And he says that whatever Imam Muslim has said is correct. And what Albani has said is wrong. He has mistaken. He, for knowingly or unknowingly, intentionally or unintentionally, for some reason or the other, he has done zulm and injustice to Sahih Muslim. And I am declaring that. And he says that he has done this to other books. Now he is going to Bukhari. And he says, I don't know what he is going to do with Bukhari. And then he says, Umurun yabhaku sufahau minha, wa yabki min awaqibiha labibu. These are matters that the stupid person might laugh at it, but a person with understanding will cry over it. That what is happening with the field of hadith? And then he says, with Bukhari, in, in his silsilatul ahadith is sahiha, silsilatul ahadith is zaifa, he will narrate some hadith and he will say, oh, this hadith is zaif. Maybe he might not realize that that hadith is in Bukhari. He might narrate it from Dharami. He might narrate it from somewhere. But then the muhaddisin come and pick his mistakes. Shaykh Hassan ibn Ali al saqaf he comes. And he writes a book, Tanaqudatul Albani al-Wadiha. Albani's clear-cut contradictions. How he contradicts himself. He says one hadith is sahih over here. After a few, few pages he says da'if. He says one ravi is siqah over here. After a few pages he say, says that, that ravi is not siqah. And in similar manner, he says the mazmoon of this hadith is in Bukhari, whereas the original words are in Sahih al-Bukhari. And he, he, he writes a book of two volumes and he gathers 1,000 contradictions of Bukhari in that book. And he says, can you rely upon a person who has 1,000 contradictions within this small framework and on these books? He was a wehmi person. He had too much wehm in his mind. He would, his mind would be boggled. And in fact, if you go and ask the students of Albani, who are the shuyukh of your Shaykh Albani? Regarding whom some people say, لَوْ حَلَفْتُ بَيْنَ الرُّقْنِ وَالْمَقَامِ أَنِّي مَا رَأَيْتُ مِثْلَهُ مَا حَنَسْتُ This was a word which was said regarding Tirmizi and others. But they use it for Albani. If I were to stand between Hajari Aswad and Maqam Ibrahim and swear that I have not seen anyone like Albani, then my oath would not break. Then I would say to them, then you haven't seen Muhaddisi. If you, did, if you had seen Muhaddisin, you would never make such remark. Because he has no shuyukh. We have our chain of ahadith. Alhamdulillah, I studied ahadith with shuyukh, who had studied from shuyukh, from shuyukh, and continuous chain up to the muhaddis and the author of the book. My Sanad of Sahih al-Bukhari, my Sanad of Sahih Muslim, my Sanad of Tirmizi, Abu Dawood, Nasai, Ibn Majah, where I got the ijazah from. Mufti Abdul Rahman and others, Morana Zakaria, we have our sanad, our chain. You can't study without that chain. Every year when I start my teaching of Sahih Muslim, which I teach in Darul Ulum, I, I relate that sanad to the students, that this is my sanad. I am not a bogus person. I studied from Mashaykh, I studied from Asatiza. Alhamdulillah, I have ijazat from Shaykh al-Hadith, Mawlana Muhammad Zakaria Kandalwi, Rahmatullah Ali. I studied Bukhari Sharif twice, once with Shaykh Islam al-Haq, Kandalwi, uh, Shaykh Islam al-Haq, Rahmatullah Ali. And secondly, again with Shaykh Yunus Muhammad John Khuri in uh, Saharanpur. And I studied other books of Ahadith from so and so Asatiza. I, I tell them my chain of Sahih Muslim. So this is continuous <coughs> chain for which you have to sit in front of the Asatiza and learn from them. If you were to ask Albani's chain, he doesn't have a chain. Because he never went to Shuyukh to study from them. He used to repair watches in Medina Munawwara in a shop. And then he developed this desire to learn Hadith. And he went to the Qutub Khana and library of Medina Jamia Islamiyah uh, University. And he started looking into books. And then he wrote a small booklet with regards to Zifaf, Nikah. And then another book. And the book was published and it was widely accepted. And he thought to himself, yeah, what use is repairing watches? This is a nice way. And he starts writing books. And then it's widely accepted. And then when he sees that he has become an authority, then he starts creating all these confusions within uh, the ummah. Just last hajj, we were with Shaykh Yunus And Ahmad Ashur was sitting there. And he said, Shaykh, you know in Medina Munawwara a few days back, there was this person who wrote this booklet and he said that in Sahih al-Bukhari there are so many, I don't know, 100 or 120 Zaif ahadith. Now Shaykh Yunus has been teaching Sahih bukhari for the past 40 years. And he has great love for Sahih al-Bukhari. He knows Bukhari inside out. He teaches from beginning till the end throughout the year. He teaches for sometimes maybe 3, 4, 5 hours in a day. Long lessons. He knows Bukhari inside out. 